Andreas Bart is living the dream. In his winter wonderland in Sweden's Lapland, he owns a husky farm with 50 dogs. The sled dog handler, better known as a musher, has lived here for five years. He's made Lapland his home, along with his partner, Kirsten Puller. Their love of dogs brought them here. When you first get the sled dog bug, it's very hard to stop. Working with sled dogs is a bit more than just owning dogs. I trust the dog, and the dog trusts me. You see this cooperation best in difficult situations and moments. You don't forget it. When you've been in a snowstorm a few times, or been pushed to the limit, and your dogs bring you home, because they trust you and you give the responsibility to the dogs, there is so much potential, and it is also fun. Andreas and Kirsten have been together since 1996. Two years ago, their relationship was put to the test. In late summer 2017, they decided to take on an epic challenge. Norway's Begebi Lopet sled dog race, the northernmost race in the world. It meant lots of work for the pair, who come from northern Germany. I used to do this for the children, repairing things and sewing. Now I do it for the dogs. I would have never dreamt of doing that before. <laughs> Ten weeks before the race. The first snow has fallen, for Andreas, that means the start of the tourist season. It will feel a little weird at first. You think it's stable, but it moves a bit. But it's OK. You get used to it. Andreas earns a living by offering tourist rides. That means training for the race is not always possible. When you want to race, there is a clash between training for such a big event and offering tours. We want to do both. We want our guests to be happy. Sometimes he has to train in darkness while also doing tours. Andreas wants to do 3,500 kilometers of training before the race. Every one counts. Training is going well until five weeks before the race, when Kerstin decides she is too stressed and busy at home to take part. We have a young couple who can help instead. We have a thousand percent faith in them. But the guy doesn't know if he's free to come. If the girl Francie comes alone, then I think it is easier if she goes with Andreas. I would love to, but it's fine if it works out with Francie. Then we'll still have a vet, so that's okay. <laughs> I think it is something you would never forget. Kirsten is irreplaceable. What can I say? A few days before the race, Francie arrives alone. Her partner couldn't come. Um, Kerstin wants to stay home to help the workers on the farm. Francie will support Andreas in the race. We'll make the best of it, and I think that Francie is tough enough. I reckon she can keep her cool better than me. I'm always a bit too overexcited. <laughs> we'll see when the time comes. 
Andreas and Kirsten have trained for over half a year and have sacrificed a lot. Now Andreas will have to face the challenge without Kirsten. Have fun. Forty-five participants from five countries are at the start of the Burger Biloper. Andreas faces a 350-kilometer trek over the next few days. The musher and his dogs will head into Norway's Arctic Circle for the first leg. Ice-cold winds and temperatures as low as 40 degrees below Celsius will push them to their limits. Regular breaks will be necessary. The physical strain is enormous and the dogs need to recover. Okay. Mental concentration is also crucial for both man and dog. After five and a half hours, Andreas and his dogs reach the first checkpoint in Vatsu. They've managed around 70 kilometers. It was quite a relaxed first leg. The dogs found their rhythm after about 20 kilometers. Of course, it wasn't easy. The quicker they lie down now and have a rest, the quicker we can recover. And then we'll see. The breaks are just as important in the race as the long runs. Too little sleep for the dogs and the musher can have dramatic consequences. While Andreas sets off again after four hours rest, other sled dog racers are taking the first injured dogs out of the event. Andreas has no such problems, and on the second leg, he makes some real progress. The dogs flew out of the checkpoint and have pushed themselves more than before. We had 70 tough kilometers before. At the moment, things are clicking into place, but we're not even at the halfway point. On the next leg, things continue to go smoothly. The partnership with Francie is working well. When he rests, she takes care of the dogs. But the race has left its mark on Andreas. It is now the third day, and he has only really slept for three hours in total. The journey through the darkness has become a real test. Now we've got another 105 kilometers, and then, my friend, we can go home. The finish line is drawing ever nearer, but their stay at a checkpoint is far longer than expected. It shouldn't happen, but it's one of those things. I got the feeling that Anouk was just too tired, and I went to speak to the vet, and they confirmed it, and the dog must be pulled out of the race. You have to give the dog to your specific handler, and only then can you leave the checkpoint. But she had her phone off. And we've been standing around here for six hours. That is six hours in the darkness. Andreas had been trying to contact Francie without success. 
The rules say only Francie can take the exhausted dog. I've made a big mistake and I'm paying for it. I was asleep and I put my phone on silent just out of habit. It was really bad. Due to the lost time, the torch batteries are running low, as well as the phone battery after all those calls. Carrying on now is not possible. 100 kilometers from the end, and Andreas's dream of completing the race is over. I know he was extremely unhappy. He put so much work and money into it. I mean, we could have had tourists here for those two weeks. He's well aware of that himself. But I know and he knows that I will totally back him again in the future. I think it was clear the very next day that he wanted to try it again. Two years later, and Andreas is planning to race again with a new team. He is hopeful thanks to his two lead dogs. Andreas has a special relationship with Clara and Inari. Good lead dogs are often very sensitive, very intelligent. They have to find the trail in all weathers and deal with the pressure and have solid endurance. If there are eight to ten dogs behind who are rushing too much, then it is mentally tiring for the dogs. But not every dog does that. Dogs like Inari or Clara are a pleasure to work with. Lead dogs like Clara and Inari are the extended arm of the musher and the most important animals on the team. I had the experience in the past that the girls are really tough when they get in difficult situations. The guys work hard too, there is nothing to complain about. But when it comes to the real thing, then it's often these seemingly normal female dogs who put their heads down and go through a blizzard. And you stand back and think, how is that possible? But they just do it. Andreas's dream of completing a long-distance sled race lives on. He even wants Francie at his side again next time.